That's what it's all about. Amen. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn with me to Mark chapter 16 and verses, uh, we're going to read verses 15 through 16, a well-known verse. Uh, amen. Everybody repeat after me. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. You may be seated. For just a few moments, I'm going to preach on this thought. His word is in our hands. His word is in our hands. Amen. I'm thankful for the truth. I'm going to acknowledge my, my buddy Paul here. Uh, 11 years ago, this guy got me into church. If it wasn't for this guy getting me into church, I wouldn't be standing here today. And I'm also thankful for truth because this truth brings salvation. I could have been somewhere else right now. I could have been out there lost on drugs, getting drunk, getting high. I could have been out there doing all those things. I could have been dead and in hell right now. But I'm thankful for the grace of God and for his truth because his truth is a truth that saves. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, um, I was at work and uh, my wife called me. Sister Heather called me and she said, um, let, me, let me backtrack a little. Just, just a few days ago, I sent a friend of mine a message on Facebook and I wanted to reach out to him. I hadn't heard from him in a little while. And my wife calls me yesterday and she says, hey, did you know that your friend died? I said, um, I said which friend? She said, I'm not going to say his name, but she, she said this particular friend of yours. And uh, it, it broke me. Right at that moment, it broke me. I didn't know if I was sad. I didn't know if I was angry. This guy was, this guy was a good friend of mine. I'm not going to say he was my best friend. But him and I were, you know, we had a good friendship. Me and him clicked every time we were around each other. Back in the day, me and him used to dishwash together at the Hillcrest. And I used to talk to him about the Lord. And I used to witness to him about the things of God. And he never acted upon it. But he was real receptive to it. And that, that meant a lot to me. And every time, every time I'd see him, I'd, you know, I, I was real friendly with him. And this, just a, a few months ago, I ran into him, gave him a ride home. He was... He was on foot. He had just got a new phone, so he was, he was having a good day. And I had been reaching out to him and saying, hey, you should come to, you should come to service tonight. Hey, you should, come to, you should come to revival tonight. And uh, there was always some kind of an excuse that came up or always some kind of a reason. But here's why I'm thankful for this truth. Because the Bible says that if you are born again of the water and of the spirit, if you are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, According to Acts 2.38, and you receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, according to Acts chapter 2, according to Mark chapter 16, amen, you will be saved and you will not have to face, face what's on the other side. And unfortunately, I hate to say it, but my friend, my friend didn't act upon Acts 2.38. And I'm no man's judge, but I have this discernment from the word of God that tells me if a man isn't born again of the water and the spirit, he is not going to see the kingdom of God. And... I used to witness to this guy, and the the, fun, the the crazy thing about getting that news yesterday is I was, I had woke up early in the morning, I was in prayer, and uh, I had started reading, at, that's where I'm at in my Bible right now, I'm in the book of Ezekiel, and I had read this particular portion of scripture, and it's in, you don't have to follow along, it's in Ezekiel chapter 3 and verses 18 through 19, and God had given Ezekiel the God had put his spirit into Ezekiel, and God had told uh, Ezekiel to, to eat the word of God. And he says that the word of God was real sweet to the taste, but real bitter to his stomach. And Ezekiel chapter, in Ezekiel chapter 3, it says, When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And this is God speaking to Ezekiel. When, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn him. To warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn 
not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. In other words, what this portion of scripture is telling me is that when God gives me the truth, when God gives me the word, I'm accountable to telling you about it. You got to understand that with this with this particular truth, it, it's nothing to play around with. If I don't tell people about Jesus, if I don't tell people about salvation and, and I go on to die, I'm accountable for not doing that work. I believe that the word of God says that we will not only be judged by what we, what we do, but we're also going to be judged by what we don't do. And this particular parable that Jesus spoke comes into my mind in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Jesus is, Jesus is saying, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And he gave unto the first five, into the first five talents to another two and to another one. To every man according to his several ability. Amen. So, so God will give you according to your own ability. If God knows you have a passion to reach to reach souls, God's going to give you a big portion. If God knows that you will reach souls, but you're not strong enough to do it, God will give you a smaller portion. God will work with you. God knows what you can handle and what you can't handle. And it says, and straightway took his journey. Then he that received the five talents went and traded with some and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two had also gained another two. So the two that one received five talents received another five. The other that received two talents received another two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And he said to the one that had received five talents came and wait. And so he that had received the five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside me another five talents. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. I will make thee a ruler over many things. This is the, this is the best part of this scripture. He tells that, that faithful servant, Come, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. In other words, he's saying, You did good, now come home and be with me. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. I will make thee a ruler over many things. Come, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown. And gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. <clears throat> he answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not. And gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him that hath ten talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even thou which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let me ask you a question. What is it that the Lord has given us, the church, that he has given us that we are accountable for? Can, can anybody tell me what the Lord has given us that we are accountable for? The gospel, that's right, the good news. The gospel, and he's given us the Holy Ghost. He's given us his word. He's given us his power. He's given us his anointing. He's given us truth, and he's given us his name to call on. We are, we're accountable because of what the Lord has given us. The Lord has, has given us these things. You see, when, when, the, Lord, when the Lord told them, um, you shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. When he said, go ye and preach the gospel to every creature, what the Lord was saying is, all right, I was with you, but now I'm going to be in you. 
I'm no longer going to be here. So you need to go out there and you need to get your hands dirty and do the dirty work. Because at my coming, I want to find me a church that is without spot or wrinkle. A, a church that is nourished in true doctrine. A church that has understanding of the word of God. Another, another scripture that comes to mind is when I say that not only are we going to be judged for what we do, but we'll be judged for what we don't do. Luke 12, 47 through 48, Jesus says, And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself. Somebody, somebody in here, somebody needs to start preparing themselves. Neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes, he shall be beaten a few stripes. That's interesting to say is that if you know the truth, you're more accountable than somebody who didn't know the truth. That's why when Pastor came up here before he, before he handed the microphone over to me, he gave me confirmation of what I was going to preach tonight. Because he said, I'm going to teach on, I might be teaching on this this Sunday, and I'm accountable if I don't teach it. You see, he's doing the job of a shepherd. You got to understand that people are going to stray away from the shepherd. People aren't always going to pay attention. Pay attention, and his job is to go and try to try to keep them on the path to eternal life. But a lot of times, people don't want to hear. But we're accountable as a church. We're accountable to hear the word of God. We're accountable to have open ears. We're accountable to listen. We're accountable to be receptive. Because at the end of the day, he, yeah, he's going to give an account to you for you as a pastor. But he, if he did a good job, he's not going to be he's not going to be in trouble because, like Ezekiel said, he told you the truth. You are accountable for yourself, and you are accountable for your own salvation. So I suggest that that somebody would start acting upon the word of God and that somebody would start letting the word of God have meaning in their lives because this whole entire life is temporary, but heaven is eternal. Eternity. It's eternity. It says, for unto him whosoever much is given, to him shall much be required. And to, hit, and to whom men have committed much, of him will they ask more. So how do we prepare ourselves? This, this, this parable said that he who knew his father's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. So how do we prepare ourselves? How do we prepare ourselves to do the work of God? And how do we prepare ourselves to be in the will of God? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6 says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. In other words, what the Lord is saying is he didn't say if you pray. He said when you pray. We have to have a prayer life. We have to have a secret place where we escape, where we escape from everybody and we get, start having a conversation with the Lord. And when it says he will reward you openly, in other words, when I, when I go and I'm praying for something, I'm not going to come and, and tell you what I'm praying for. And I'm not going to tell you, hey, I prayed this and I prayed that. I will testify later and say, hey, I prayed about this and, and, and the Lord did this for me. See, that's rewarding openly when you receive when you're not in your prayer closet because of your faithfulness to prayer and your faithfulness to the word of God and your faithfulness to to the time that you give to God, God is going to reward you openly. And not only that, but you got to get yourself in tune with God's word in order to be prepared and, and start putting God's word into action. He, he commanded us, he said, go ye, go ye and preach the gospel. He said, when you pray, he said, when you fast, he said, when you do your alms, he said, when you obey the word of God, he says, when you hear these sayings of mine and you do them, I'll make you like a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And when the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house, it didn't fall because it was founded upon a rock. And it's the same contrary. If you aren't founded in truth, if you don't have a prayer life, if you don't have a life of obedience, if you're not in the word of God, your house is going to be on a very unstable foundation. And when the storms of life hit, when all the tornadoes start to come and the rain starts to hit, when the electric bill goes off, when, when a family member dies, you're going to fall apart because you don't have a good foundation on the word of God. James 1.22 says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You listen to this preacher when I say this, and I'm accountable to saying this. 
you need to get yourself in tune with God and in tune with the word of God. Because he's coming soon. And there's people that you know and there's people that you have relationships with. And there's people that you have friends, friendships with. And there's people that you associate with every day. That if you don't tell them this truth, that if you don't, if you don't take it to them, you're going to be accountable. These people are waiting on you. And these people are waiting on me. And if I choose to get caught up in the temporary things of this life, and if I choose to let myself get distracted from the things of God, I'm not going to get to that level that God wants me to be. Too many times, when it comes time to get into prayer, distractions will come our way. You have to learn how to shut out those distractions because you'll get that feeling in your conscience where God is telling you to come shut off everything, get away from everyone. You and I need to speak. And sometimes God will be needing to speak to you about a particular someone. And, and I'm, not, I'm not 100% about this, but I believe that God laid on my heart my friend when I sent him a message saying, hey, hey, friend, how's it going? Because I didn't hear back from him. And then come to find out he had passed away a few days before. That, that's heartbreaking to me. You got to understand that we need to reach these people and we need to bring these people the truth. That you need to be baptized in Jesus' name and that you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't care if, according to the Bible, it doesn't matter whether you're a Jehovah's Witness, whether you're an apostolic whether you're a Christian, whether you call yourself a Seventh-day Adventist, whether you call yourself a Southern Baptist, whatever you call yourself. According to the Word of God, according to Acts 2.38, according to John chapter 3 and 3 verse 5, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name and you need to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But the gift of the Holy Ghost isn't only to leave you by yourself. But Jesus said, I will send you a comforter. And this comforter will teach you. And this comforter will bring to your remembrance all things. So in other words, yes, we're accountable for obeying the truth. But in all reality, we can't obey the truth. And we can't live for God. And we can't take the word of God without the Holy Ghost. You can take the word of God without the Holy Ghost. But you're going to be taking a distorted version of the word of God. And you're not going to be leading people. But you're going to be misleading people. But when you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost starts to give you knowledge. And the Holy Ghost starts to give you understanding. All of a sudden, you'll be able to understand the scriptures. All of a sudden, you'll be getting revelations about the things of word of God in prayer or, or, or when you're reading his word. Or, or when you're just in the middle of doing something and God starts to speak to you. You'll begin to get those revelations. And then you got to go and you got to take those revelations. And you got to give it to somebody who doesn't have revelation. you got to give it to somebody who needs to hear the word of God. And that's what we're accountable for. That's the whole purpose of this accountability. The Lord left this gospel in our hands. The Lord left the truth in our hands. You got to understand there's a lost world out there. You think if somebody gets, if somebody gets behind the wheel drunk driving, you think they're going to make it to heaven? No. They're not going to make it to heaven. Why? Not because I'm, I'm not a man's judge. But I know that the Bible says that the drunker will not go to heaven. You got to understand that when it comes to God, the whole entire purpose of Jesus Christ dying on the cross was to reconcile us to God. And that word reconcile means to bring us back into fellowship and communion with God because sin breaks that, that chain between God and man. Man cannot get into the presence of God like that. God will listen to you, and if you confess your sins, God will help you. That's the whole entire purpose of the prayer closet, is that I can confess my weaknesses. I can confess my wrongs. I can confess my bad thoughts. If I, if I said something bad that I wasn't supposed to say, I can confess it to God. And the Spirit of God that dwells in me will help me to correct it. And I can go to that prayer closet, and I can pray for others, and God will, God will touch and affect their lives. That's the whole entire purpose of the prayer closet, to give God your needs and to give God others' needs. And we're accountable to using that prayer closet. It is a privilege to have that prayer closet. Back in, back in, in the Old Testament, they had to, getting into the presence of God was, was different from what, what we call getting into the presence of God now. Getting into the presence of God for us, we can get on our knees and we can worship and we can give God praise and we can talk to God. Back then they had to go through a tabernacle and they had to go to a priest and the priest was the one that made the intercession for them to get them into the presence of God so that they could have their sins forgiven. What a, what a privilege we have today that we could just go into a private place and confess our sins to God and God will forgive our sins and he'll wipe them clean. The Bible says he'll remove your sins as far as the east is from the west. 
That's how good our God is. But the beautiful thing about having accountability to this truth is the reward that comes at the end of it. The Lord told us, he said, in my father's house there are many mansions. And he left and he said, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. And he says, I'm going to come back for you. So in the meantime, instead of wasting our time on the temporary things of this world, we need to start investing in the kingdom of God. We need to start investing in that mansion. Because every time you put something away in this world, every time you deny yourself in this world, the Bible says that you're going to have a reward in heaven. And the Bible says that you're going to have a treasure in heaven. But we have to strive in this life to get, in order to get to that next portion of life. That next portion of life is eternity with the Lord. The Bible says that there's going to be no more sickness. And that there's going to be no more illnesses. And that there's going to be no more sin. There's going to be no need for a son because the Bible says that the Lord is going to be that son. There's going to be no more need for anything because we're going to be in the presence of God. And that's the whole entire purpose of this life is the, is, is the trials and, and, and the tribulations and the battles. And it, it's, all, it's all your choice in, in between eternity and between, in between heaven and between hell. You want to know what a preacher's burden is? I want you to picture something real quick. Visualize this with me. You've got two roads. You've got two roads. The Bible says that there is a narrow road that leads to life. And the Bible says that there is a broad road that leads to destruction. What the preacher is doing is there's people, this is the path to destruction. And people are blindly walking the path of destruction. They're taking a needle from here. They're taking a, a, a beer from here. And they're, they're getting themselves laced with it. And they're getting themselves... Uh, getting themselves drunk and high and intoxicated by it. But the preacher's facing this way. The preacher puts himself in the path of danger. And I'm not saying me because I'm a preacher, but I'm saying all of you, all of you who are accountable to this truth. That while the people are walking this way, falling into the pit, the preacher's here trying to push you away and trying to beg you and giving you God's word and trying to say, hey, please don't go that route. That route, that route ain't no good. It might feel good. It might look good. It might taste good, it might sound good, but that path is going to lead you to destruction. Get on this road, ask God to forgive you, and get on this road that leads to, that leads to eternal life. My elder Archer Murphy used to say, he used to say, you know why they call this thing a pulpit? He used to say, because I'm standing here trying to pull you out of the pit. And that's the truth, and I, and and I have, I have a passion for this gospel, and I believe in this gospel, and I believe that there's going to be a revival in our city. If the people in our church, as the Bible says, if the people in our church would humble themselves and would seek the face of God, God will come and God will heal this city. As a church, we need to bind together. We need to get desperate, and we need to get hungry for the things of God. As Elder Carl Shirley was saying, we need to start pleading between the altar and the door and start pleading for the lost and start begging the Lord, God, bring the lost in, of this city into this church, Almighty God. I'm willing to get my hands dirty, and I'm willing to go do the dirty work, Almighty God. Come visit us, Lord, and give us your spirit so that way we could do your will, Almighty God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm hoping everyone under the sound here of my voice has a, has a hungry heart and has a desire for the things of God. The Bible says all you have to do is ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. That's what I spent years doing. I spent years knocking at God's door. I spent years asking God, going from church to church, looking for a church that, that had the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And I, I would go to this church and I'd feel, I'd feel conviction because there was something not real about it. And I'd be praying in that church while well, everybody else is into their stuff. And I'm not saying, I'm not using that to say that this church is better than anyone else. I stand on doctrine and I stand on truth. But when I used to go, when I used to, go to those churches and I'd be trying to worship God, and I'd be feeling that conviction that there's a deeper place that I need to be. There's something realer than this. There's more truth than this. I'd be praying, oh, God, give me the truth. Oh, God, lead me to this truth. And the interesting thing is the first time I ever went underwater, I went underwater in Jesus' name. And I had no clue what I was doing. Right, Paul? You were there. You were like, dude, get baptized. Come on. This stuff is great, man. I, I just remember you being all wired and hyper about it. And, and, and I... That night, I was finally like, okay, so I responded to the altar call, not knowing what I was doing, not knowing what to pray for, 
But I still went down into the water in Jesus' name, and that put God's hand over my life. I went from church to church to church to church later on and over the years seeking for a church that preached about the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And I had a friend telling me, just come to this church, man. The pastor preaches scripture. Just come to this church. That there's, there's no worldliness in this music. Just come to this church. And it took me months, and I was like, no, 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 no. I don't want none of that. I don't want nothing to do with that. But I kept going, and I kept searching, kept searching for God. And finally, God opened the door for me to come back into this church. I got rebaptized in 2014, and I've been living for God ever since, and I've been learning about God ever since, and I've been gaining knowledge of the truth and knowledge of the word, and I've had a hunger for God and a desire for souls, and God has blessed me for that. Come to find out that those 10 years ago, I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and I got rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and I had no clue that this was home for me the whole time. Each and every one of you that are under the sound of my voice. God has a calling on your life. God has a purpose in your life. I know that, you know, back in the world, we hunger for things that we're not supposed to have. We hunger for fame. There's people out there that hunger for fame and they chase their dreams tirelessly. There's people out there that hunger for things that they're not supposed to touch they hunger they hunger for women they hunger for drugs they hunger for alcohol and they hunger for all these things but in that life all you do is you eat sleep you enjoy whatever thing you pursue and then you die but you die without god but when it comes to the when it comes to the truth it's different because god knew who you were since before you were even in your mother's womb the Bible says that God knew you and God formed you and God had his hand over you the whole time. And he made you with a purpose. So when, it co when you come to the kingdom of God, you're no more purposeless. You no longer live to eat, sleep, and die. You have purpose. You have a purpose to serve in his kingdom. Your life has meaning now. Because not only am I striving for this place, but I'm striving to get to that place. And I'm striving to turn back and take others with me. And I promise you that I'm not going to turn back from this path. And I'm not going to turn back from this truth. Because the Bible says that they that turn back are going to get beaten with many stripes but them that stay in the will of God are going to receive a reward a reward that this world cannot provide a reward that this world cannot offer you a reward that's going to have taste and it's going to have it's going to have depth it's going to be beautiful the Bible says that there, the streets are made of gold in the kingdom of God and I can't comprehend that the Bible says that there's walls of jasper in the kingdom of God the Bible says that it is complete joy in the kingdom of God. And I cannot comprehend that. I cannot comprehend that in this world because there's pain. Because there's so much evil going on around. But let me tell you this. That if you will just listen to this preacher this evening. If you will just listen to the word of God this evening. That the Bible says that there is a reward for you. And all you need to do is repent of your sins. And all you need to do is get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you're on your way to eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I'm thankful for the truth. I'm thankful. You can come at this time, musicians. I'm thankful that God has put his hand over me all these years. That after all that I've done in my life, that God would have the grace and the mercy to look down on me and say, I choose you for my kingdom. And he's looking down on you right now and he's saying, I've brought you to my house and I choose you to my, for my kingdom. Your life has purpose. Go ye and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth in is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Acts 1.8 but ye shall, be, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses of me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in all the, other, all the uttermost parts of the earth. In other words, he's saying you're not only going to be witnesses to me here, but you're going to be witness of, witnesses of me here in Las Vegas, New Mexico. Let's all stand. Almighty God, I pray that the word of God hit home tonight, Lord, that hearts would be saturated, Lord Jesus, God. That hearts would be burdened, Lord Jesus, to do service to your kingdom, Almighty God. I pray that the word of God would be receptive, Lord Jesus, and we could take it with us, Almighty God, and have it in our hearts, Lord Jesus. I pray that people would establish a place in their prayer closet, Lord Jesus, and I pray, Lord, that people will start digging into the word of God and, and seeing what your Bible says, Almighty God. 
If you need prayer, if you have pain in your body, if you need healing, if you need deliverance, or if you would just like to come pray, I invite you to the front. These altars are open.